Hey guys, welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm doing that uh, pause menu tutorial I promised you guys. And um, for the sake of time, I've already typed everything out, so I'm just going to go through it with you. So to start this off, let's look at our sprites. I've got three um, selects here. One is continue, each of which have, see, two sub-images. One's selected, one's unselected. So it's continue, there's options, and there's exit. Yeah, there we go. And then I've got our backdrop, so those options are going to be drawn on top of that. And then our player, which is going to be doing stuff in the background, so you can see that he's all paused and everything. So objects. Firstly, room controller. Right? This you put in every room that you want uh, to be able to pause. And it simply just creates the object pause menu controller. And I'll tell you why you have to have an object just to do that on its own in a second. So it creates object pause menu controller. And what this does is when it's created, it first saves the screen. And it's going to save it to a file working screen. If you type in screen save, right, it's going to pop up with two functions. One of which is the one I'm using now, which just saves it to the file name, which is in the working directory. The second one saves, saves it to the working directory, but here it's got some extra you know, arguments. X and Y, that's your top X and Y coordinate. Then your width is how far to the right, and your height is how far down. So if you wanted to save only a portion of the screen to be used in some other, I don't know, effort, then you can use the bottom one. But for our sake, we want to use the top one because we want to save the entire screen. Okay. So that'll save an image of what's going on. Then, important, deactivate all. We're going to deactivate everything in the game. And here, we're setting not me to true, because we don't want to deactivate the menu controller, because we actually want to do stuff. We want to select continue options or exit. Um, now, in GameMaker, when it deactivates stuff, it, everything goes invisible, and uh, GameMaker uh, keeps a pointer to the object, so that when you reactivate it, it can just put all the sprites and everything back to where uh, they were before. So that is why we have to create a screenshot, because if we don't create a screenshot and we just deactivate everything other than this, then we'll have an ugly background. It'll just be the background with all your objects all invisible. So that's the reason for saving the screenshot. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to take the working screeny, which is the screenshot we saved, and we're going to add it to this variable called background. Okay. Then interest, you want to know what interest is? Basically, instead of creating um, three objects, one for each button, I'm just controlling all of that here in the pause menu controller and um, we're setting it to continue so that um, in the step it's going to change the continue uh, sprites to the second sub image to show that selected and if you push down interest changes to options and then the step event checks if interest is options then the options uh, sprite should have sub image of two okay so let's continue if we go now to uh, these ones, press up, press down. Okay. Ultimately, what they do is they just change the interest, what the focus is on. So, focus starts as continue. If you push down, oh wait, this is up. If you push up, it's going to go from the top to the bottom. It's going to go to exit. If it was on options and you push up, it's going to go to continue. If it was on exit, it's going to go to options. Right? And it's the very opposite for the down. See, so continue goes down to options, options goes down to exit, exit goes back to the top to continue. All right. And then here, and I'll draw GUI. This is where everything is drawn. Okay. So, firstly, we're going to draw that sprite background, which we saved over here in the create. The screeny, we set it to the variable background. So, what we're going to do is, on the deactivated instances, we're going to draw, on top of all that, this sprite. Now, you can draw it to the background if you want. I guess you could do that. But I'm just going to draw a sprite. And then on top of that sprite, draw our backdrop. So, I've just got that to the center of the room. Now, this is um, to determine which sprite of each one of these uh, little selects is, is chosen. If the interest, the play interest is on continue, then the continue one has, you know, sub image of one, and the other two have zero, and the same for options and exit. There we go, there we go. And those are all drawn, you know, on that little plate. Okay, cool. Now, now, when um, the player presses escape, it's going to destroy itself. But when it destroys itself here, firstly, we're going to check if that screeny exists and we're going to delete it. What is it called here? I think it was called the working screeny.png. Make sure it's got the same name. Um, we don't need it anymore, so we are going to destroy that. Uh, then we're going to activate all the instances again. 
right? So this will be destroyed and everything else will go back to normal as it was. And uh, Game Maker will check out those pointers and put the little sprites where they're supposed to be. And I've added the same thing for Game End. Uh, we can just destroy that because we no longer need it. And now if the user presses Enter, this also does a similar thing to uh, the up and down presses. What it does is it checks the interest. If the interest is continue, then it destroys itself. And in destroying itself, it activates all the instances. If it's options, this is where you're going to have to draw. You can make another object where it draws the menu on top of that, etc. And then if it is exit, we're going to check if that file exists. Working screen, we're going to delete it, and the game's going to end. Which, yeah, game ends. Calls game end. Well, I guess I do it there, so I don't really need this. Okay, that's all good, that's all good. And you're probably wondering where it saves these screenshots. So what you can do is you can go to your computer, go C drive, go users, go to your name, then go type at the top. You've got to type in backslash app data. It's hidden. Local. Find the name of your game. In my one, it's called uh, pause menu. Okay, then it's going to save it right over here. So let's minimize that for now. Let's go to object player. Now, object player is just going to be going bobbing up and down, doing its thing. I'm not going to have any control of object player. This is just to show that when the pause screen is active, he's going to stop moving and the pause screen will be active. You click continue, deletes the background, and, you know, there he goes again. Um, firstly, let's also make sure pause menu controller is just Oh, yeah, right, because this is drawn when it deletes it, it'll stop drawing that. It'll stop drawing this placement background that we're putting in there. Cool, cool. And yeah, let me go through object player. So when he's created his direction, remember I've put a little underscore there because direction is a reserved word. Direction is down and then it's going to call alarm zero every two seconds. So that's going to go two seconds. Alarm zero does, all it does is sets it to the opposite direction. So if it was going down, now go up. If it was going up, now go down and then call this alarm again in the next two seconds. And then the step just checks if it's up, then Y is minus equal to 2, else if it's down, it's the opposite. Pretty basic. And so in the room, here we've just got object room controller and our player. That's it. So every room you want paused, you put in object room controller. Okay. So let's do this. Let's test this out. Okay, so there we go. The player is bobbing up and down. He's doing his own thing. I have no control of him whatsoever. So now if I push escape, boop, escape. Notice how there's a little bit of transparency going on here. We've got the back plate. We've got the three options. I'm not, I haven't let, made them clickable. I guess you could do that if you want. So here we've got control, we've got options, we've got exit, moving up and down. Let's check it's going through, it's cycling through those. If it's on control, if I push the down, it goes to options, which goes to exit, which goes back to control. Continue, sorry. Um, now, if I push options, nothing's going to happen because I haven't set that. If I push escape, exit, it's going to exit the game. If I push continue, it's going to delete the pause menu controller, which in turn deletes the image that we've seen because this player, that's not the player object. This is just a big screenshot that we've taken and we put it in there. So we're fooling the player into believing that everything's there and it's waiting for him to come back, which in fact, it's just all in the air. Okay, so if I push continue, it's going to delete the background, and um, Game Maker is going to check out that pointer and put our object player back in his original position. So if I click continue, boop, notice the pause menu disappeared, transparency is gone, and the player is moving up and down again, as he was before. And if I go here, see it's deleted it, so now let's push escape and watch it. Pop up, escape, go here, there we go. If we go into this, notice that that is the exact same as that what it's using. It's using this screenshot. And when you delete it, that'll go away again, just to clean it up. So that's pretty much that. And when you push escape, it does the same thing. It just cleans up that screenshot. We don't need it. Next time we play, it'll be different. So we'll make a new one. Um, that pretty much wraps up the pause menu. So yeah, remember when this controller pops up, uh, the reason I've got it as a separate entity is because when this pops up, I wanted to make a screenshot. If you have that stuff in in its room controller here, ah, it's just gonna lag up because it's me creating a screenshot every step or something. Well, every time you press escape, well, it should be fine, but don't worry. Um, yeah, just do it this way. 
Um, okay, I think that's pretty much that. So remember, deactivate all. Make sure this is true. That's not me. So deactivate everything except me because I've got to do stuff still. If you have this as false, then there's no way to uh, reactivate everything right now because everything will be deactivated. You know what everything else does. Then when the game ends or it, well, when it's destroyed, then you can activate everything. And um, that'll, when this is destroyed, you know, along with it goes the sprite that we're drawing as the background. Well, as uh, what the player perceives to be the game room still. Okay, so that wraps up this tutorial. Uh, even though we sped it up, it's like over 10 minutes already. But anyway, hope you learned something today. Uh, please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. I'll check you guys next week. Thanks for watching.